The first half of my Halloween Kills review will be spoiler free, so don't fret if you're sensitive to spoilers. Then I'm gonna go into some spoilers, but I'll give you a heads up beforehand so you can split if you don't want anything spoiled. If you thought that death trap inferno that Lori spent years, possibly decades, designing just in case Michael Myers were to ever drop by unannounced would have sealed his fate, <laughs> Michael's on the loose, and the residents of Haddonfield are hell-bent on ending evil tonight. Oh man, where to begin with Halloween Kills? So one of my issues with Halloween 2018 is that it felt like a movie without an identity. It wants to be a direct sequel to John Carpenter's Halloween, but it lacks most, if not all, of the elements that made that movie what it is. Even some of the lesser Halloween sequels that these new movies want you to pretend don't exist, yet keep reminding you of their existence, still felt like Halloween movies. I didn't get that with Halloween 2018. Halloween Kills, however, firmly cements its identity in the jagged family tree that is this series and its multiple continuities. Halloween Kills is by far the most brutal Halloween film to date, and that distinction distances it even further from the original. In fact, the brutality in Halloween Kills is so over the top that there were moments I felt like I was watching a hatchet movie and not a Halloween. There were a couple of gore effects that were so over the top, I couldn't help but laugh. And that wasn't the only time in Halloween Kills that I couldn't hold in laughter. This movie has some of the wildest tonal shifts I've ever seen. As a matter of fact, just calling them tonal shifts doesn't do it justice. This movie has mood swings that will make your head spin. We get an incredibly brutal murder followed by a guy in his underwear dancing to a silly Halloween song, followed by a scene that's supposed to be really hard-hitting and emotional, and then more brutality. There's a scene in which Michael climbs on top of an SUV, which is supposed to mimic the scene from the original in which he climbs up onto the station wagon, but I couldn't tell if I was supposed to take this scene seriously or not because it's executed so comically and culminates in a death that is jaw-droppingly dumb. In another scene, the guy in his underwear listening to silly Halloween music discovers that there's an unwelcome visitor in his home. When he decides to go confront the visitor, he chooses the tiniest knife I've ever seen to defend himself with. This scene in particular has Danny McBride's weed-smelling and Cheeto-stained fingerprints all over it. Now, I made a deal with myself prior to going into Halloween Kills. All I wanted the movie to do is entertain me, and if it can entertain me, I'll be a-okay with Halloween Kills. And there were stretches where I felt pretty entertained, but I was being entertained in a similar way that I'm entertained when watching any bad movie. I couldn't take Halloween Kills seriously at all, and it was constantly one-upping itself with the over-the-top gore and just silliness. For instance, the events of the first Halloween happened 40 years ago, and it's not like Michael committed a massacre on that Halloween night. However, the residents of Haddonfield, even if they're Haddonfielders from the next generation or the generation after the events of the night he came home, by simply invoking his name, you'll create a riot and turn these Midwestern folks into snarling, bloodthirsty maniacs. But even though they're still big mad at Michael after all these years, what do you think they decide to bring with them weapon-wise when they form a lynch mob and go after Michael? Shotguns, crossbows, sticks of dynamite? Try hockey sticks, baseball bats, and an iron. Seriously, one woman is actually holding an iron. I looked around half expecting to see one guy holding a toilet plunger, somebody else holding a 
toaster, oven, maybe somebody with a rake, a plastic rake, of course. Everything about Halloween Kills just feels off to me. The tone, the structure, the performances, the pacing, the overall storytelling. Halloween Kills almost feels like an anti-Halloween movie because it's so antithetical to the core of what made John Carpenter's Halloween and some of its sequels special. If it weren't a Halloween movie, I might be a little more favorable of it, but as a Halloween movie, it is way down the list for me. It's not quite Rob Zombie's Halloween bad, but close. Bruh. Right off the bat with the flashback to 1978, the night he came home, I felt like we were on shaky ground. The stuff with Lonnie, who was a bully but is now being bullied, just didn't feel necessary. Then we're introduced to a young Hawkins and we discover why he's so intent on wanting to kill Michael. Because his overwhelming ineptness and poor, poor marksmanship cost his partner his life. And even when CGI face Dr. Loomis is about to put a bullet into Michael, Hawkins prevents that from happening because it's just not right. And then just moments later, that conscience evaporates because he's all for covering up his partner's death, a death that he caused. The entire cast just looked uncomfortable to me. I can't blame them because the things they're asked to do and say in this movie are outlandish. The dialogue is truly awful. The whole evil dies tonight mantra and every time Michael kills, he ascends. What? Of all the characters, Tommy Doyle suffers the most. He is insufferable. And the movie makes him out to be a complete idiot. Virtually every move he makes is not just the wrong move. It's the worst possible move. Kyle Richards is really the only legacy character that the movie doesn't make look like a total idiot. That SUV scene I mentioned before and the jaw-droppingly dumb death, Michael kicks the car door. The door hits a woman's hand who's shooting at him, and that causes her to shoot herself in the head. Don't get me wrong, I laughed at it. But that's the problem. I laughed at it. I also cracked up during this scene with Little John and Big John where they're looking around their home, the former Myers house, by the way. It's like something out of Pineapple Express. I'm shocked Jonah Hill wasn't cast as one of the Johns. That sequence is punctuated by a kill in which Michael grabs one of the Johns' heads and squeezes. Instantly, his eyes fly out of his skull, his head bursts like a water balloon. It's so over the top that it can't be taken seriously. The sequence in the hospital in which Tommy whips everyone into a frenzy and it just so happens that half the residents of Haddonfield are in the hospital on this night and they go after the wrong escaped mental patient, causing that mental patient to take his own life. And how the camera lingers on the aftermath, not once, but twice. I was then and I still am now speechless. And I thought that when they retconned all the sequels, they did away not just with the brother-sister angle, but with any kind of supernatural uh, anything to do with Michael Myers. That sure went out the window quick. Now Michael is the Terminator. He can be shot, stabbed, pitchforked, have his head stomped, be beaten by bats, two-by-fours, metal pipes, and he brushes it off like a mosquito bite and kills 20 people in 10 seconds. At this point, how are they going to stop him in Halloween Ends? According to Halloween Kills, all he wants to do is go home and stare out a window. Let him have at it. And I can sum up Jamie Lee Curtis's role in Halloween Kills by echoing something that I heard a woman say on my way out of the theater. If I were Jamie Lee Curtis, I would be embarrassed as hell. And was it just me or 
did they forget to put music in this movie aside from the opening credits and the end credits? So there are my spoiler free and spoiler full thoughts on Halloween Kills. Let me know your thoughts on Halloween Kills down in the comments section below. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. I hope everybody out there is having a great, safe, healthy, happy, and horror movie filled Halloween season. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care and until next time, peace. A huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and join me for exclusive live streams, get early access to videos, and have a say in what movies I review on my channel. Become a channel member and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.